Hello, my name is Mark Miller. I'm the CEO of the John Howard Society Pacific. Uh, we're going to be talking to you about uh, collaboration to provide services to Yukon First Nations experiencing homelessness and complex needs. Hello, my name is Shadell Chambers. I'm the Executive Director at the Council of Yukon First Nations, and today I am joining you on the traditional territory of the Kwamindan First Nations and the Ta'an Kwichin Council in Whitehorse, Yukon. As Mark mentioned, um, our presentation um, is on our projects that we've been working jointly with um, John Howard Society Pacific on um, here in the Yukon. And uh, before we begin, we'll quickly give a brief description of each of our organizations and then jump into our presentation. So the Council of Yukon First Nation is a nonprofit society located in Whitehorse, Yukon. We represent the 14 Yukon First Nations um, that are located here in the Yukon. Our organization has formally been in place since 1973. And prior to that, there were um, three other organizations that came together to form the Council of Yukon Indians, uh, the Yukon Native Brotherhood, the Yukon Association of Non-Status Indians, and the Yukon Associ Association of um, Indian women. They came together in 1973 to formalize our organization that was really built to develop and negotiate the Yukon land claims. Um, and in 1990, we developed the uh, umbrella final agreement, which is the template document for our Yukon First Nations final and self-government agreements. Today, we continue to focus on advocacy and intergovernmental relations and work with um, all 14 Yukon First Nations. Mark? Thanks, Janelle. Uh, the John Howard Society Pacific, uh, we're a dynamic, innovative social service organization that strives to create safe, healthy, and inclusive communities for all. Uh, we do this through a continuum of programs which provide assistance uh, in areas of housing, life skills, education, employment, and community-based services uh, with a goal of helping individuals achieve uh, greater independence and value their positive contributions to society. Over the past year, uh, we served about 2,782 people through 29 programs. We operate 137 units of housing. About 33% of the people we work with are Indigenous. 83% uh, are men, 16% women, and 1% uh, other, other gender identities. And uh, we had about 407 people working towards safe, healthy, and inclusive communities for all. Um, a little bit about uh, uh, the time frame of how we started to collaborate. In uh, May of 2020, we opened a SHARP program in Whitehorse, which is Supervised Housing and Reintegration Program uh, in the Whitehorse Correctional Center. Uh, and at that time started to work, uh, be introduced and work collaboratively uh, with the Council of First Nations and learn more about their organization and the work that do, they're doing and some of the needs in the Yukon and, and discussion started then. Shadell. Yeah, as Mark mentioned, um, the John Howard Society Pacific was new to the Yukon in early 2020. We began to work and form our relationship there. Um, through their SHARP program, we know the overrepresentation of Indigenous people in the criminal justice system. Um, is a reality here in the Yukon. So we did uh, initially form our relationship through the SHARP program. In, 20, uh, in September 2020, both of our organizations uh, decided to collaborate together and respond to an expression of interest that was um, released by Yukon Government Justice. They were looking for supervised housing for women in the territory. Currently, the um, halfway house in the Yukon um, is only for males. So we were really excited to see this opportunity be um, available for us to jointly work together. So again, addressing the over-representation of Indigenous women in the criminal justice system, we submitted an expression of interest together. Um, 
Later on, uh, over um, the next couple months, we continue to work with John Howard to collaborate on, um, again, responding to an expression of interest that was released by Yukon Government Health and Social Services for operations of the Housing First Residence and the Whitehorse Emergency Shelter. Again, um, the overrepresentation of Yukon First Nations and Indigenous people, uh, both accessing the Housing First Residence and the Whitehorse Emergency Shelter. Again, it was a really a great opportunity for us to collaborate and work together. Mark? Sure. In uh, April of 2021, uh, we were successful uh, in our uh, application to begin operating Housing First. Uh, and again, when we started, we recognized that 16 of 18 residents uh, are First Nations, uh, either from the Yukon or neighboring territories and provinces. Um, Next slide. Um, a little bit about our partnership. Uh, again, as a, as a new organization uh, to the Yukon, we certainly brought uh, a great deal of experience in, in British Columbia, uh, in the areas of, of housing and working with individuals with complex needs in the community, uh, but really didn't have a, a good understanding of unique needs in the Yukon and particularly the uh, unique needs of Yukon First Nations. Uh, we did, however, uh, I think begin with a, a clear understanding of the, the mission and vision of the Council of Yukon First Nations uh, and, and some basics that we understood that communication uh, and collaboration were necessary uh, to move forward together. Shadal? Yeah, just further on that, we were seeing a lot of opportunities to collaborate to address um, unique uh, populations of Yukon First Nations and uh, those facing complex needs because John Howard was new to the Yukon and we had a long history of providing service um, deliveries and advocacy supports to Yukon First Nations. Uh, we decided to formalize our partnership and uh, entered into an official partnership of understanding. And it's been a real great opportunity to um, be able to clarify and solidify our relationship with John Howard. For sure, just to add to that, I think uh, we, we really have tried to do is have a clear understanding of uh, uh, the opportunity that exists and, and who should lead in that particular uh, case and, and, uh, and who should be in more of a support role. Um, I think that's something we've been really successful at each time an opportunity. Uh, comes up, or more importantly, a need comes up in the community that we're talking about how we can how we can meet that together, and and what role each of the organizations uh, can play to support the other. Um, moving on to the housing first residents, uh, in particular, um, our application was around uh, John Howard Society bringing the experience of operating housing. Uh, and that we were able to uh, provide the operational services to, to the housing, um, but that we certainly, with 16 of 18 residents being uh, Indigenous and, and Yukon First Nations, uh, that we needed support and in order to uh, ultimately uh, serve those individuals in the best possible way that uh, CYFN uh, would, be, would be in support of that. So, Shadell, do you want to comment on that a bit? Yeah, I think it's really important to note that the Housing First residence was funded and built by Yukon government uh, through Health and Social Services and Yukon Housing Corporation. Uh, they did operate it for, I believe, the first um, number of months. And then, as I noted in a previous slide, they did issue an expression of interest to um, see who was interested in operating and managing it. Uh, so we were fortunate to be fortunate enough to be the successful um, proponent and uh, really wanted to ensure that there was a collaborative approach uh, to the housing first residents, as Mark mentioned. So John Howard had uh, years of experience operating the residents. Uh, uh, CYFN had years of working with Indigenous populations, particularly Yukon First Nations. So uh, our agreement under our partnership of understanding is um, John Howard is, is the lead um, 
lead on the housing first residents and we are, are secondary, but we do provide a lot of support through consultations. So looking at the operations and um, how we allocate units, but also to ensure we provide culturally appropriate supports and services. So we are at the residents um, every week. We offer culturally relevant traditional food. We've um, offered knowledge keepers and elders to be available for a cultural and emotional supports. And we've also offered some programming. So arts and some traditional activities are also being offered at Housing First Residence. Uh, so a little bit about the Housing First approach in the Yukon. Um, essentially residents have uh, no expectation of being housing ready. Uh, it's an anticipated that uh, significant supports uh, might be required to sustain their tenancy. Uh, and uh, in many cases, uh, ongoing challenges with mental health, substance use, uh, physical health challenges, uh, and, and uh, limited income, as well as a disconnection from their culture and their communities at times. Um, we provide harm reduction supplies and a, and a safety plan uh, for residents in active addiction. Uh, it's a double staff model at all times. Uh, we do everything from goal setting and liaising with other service providers, as well as uh, Yukon government uh, ministries. Uh, Relationship-based supports, uh, regular check-ins. Uh, we have crisis intervention and supportive listening um, and uh, supportive problem solving and uh, resilience and self-awareness. Yeah, just to further add a, a few more components, we've been working very closely with uh, community stakeholders and community groups as well. So we work very closely with the RCMP, the Referred Care Clinic, mental wellness supports through Yukon government. And as mentioned, uh, the Council of Yukon First Nation is providing culturally relevant supports as well. Uh, and we do look forward in the near future as a priority um, to rename um, our program to make it more reflective of our tenants and the community that we work with. So um, we continue to look forward to uh, working together with the John Howard Society and our tenants to ensure the housing first approach um, meets their needs and gets the supports and services that the tenants require. <clears throat> 